Welcome to a video. This is not a brood day video. This is a video about dealing with oxygen when it comes to transferring a beer. Quite a few people have been asking, what do you do to minimize oxygen during transferring? This is that video. You ask, you shall receive. I said that weird. Let's keep going. And uh, this is, I got some, my dry hops that are vacuum sealed. I have a keg filled right now with PBW and all the stuff is in it. All the accoutrements, all the things that go into it, it's all being cleaned right now. People use different things to clean with. Sanitation's different. I clean with PBW, five star. On the back of it, there's instructions about how much to add and, and what temperatures. Follow that, it's super easy, it's cheap for, for one of these. This essentially removes organic matter, uh, which is different than sanitizing. Sanitizing with star sand, which is what's in my spray bottle, just basically rinses everything so to help prevent bacteria from getting in. I do not clean as much as I should. I do probably once every three or four times I use the keg and other stuff. I need to be better with it. So, I, so I'm soaking this for about 30 minutes. It's been about 20 minutes now. And I'm uh, gonna dump all that out. And then uh, we're gonna show, I'm going to show you what I do to prevent oxygen while transferring. I will also address the issue if you do not have a keg or a CO2 tank, what you can do. So yeah, let's start kegging. I have two gallons here. This is sanitized. Got my two gallon jugs here. Well, one gallon each. I dry hop in the keg. I always do. I've never had an issue, even if it's there for like three weeks or longer even. I get asked this a lot. What is this? Where do I get it? Is it like a quick disconnect? And I honestly don't know where I bought mine. Just Google quick disconnect and mine is this one. But the thing I don't like about this particular one is that it is uh, kind of rusted. So I had a metal one and it doesn't leak, but I would get plastic if I were doing it again. Now I do have a whole video on kegging. This is not that video. This is just oxygen uh, elimination video. At the beginning, I wasn't really clamping down this very tightly, but I'm going a little tighter more and more. I know it's not ideal, but uh, I, I, I'm having leaks if I don't really kind of tighten it down. I have extra O-rings that they wore out, they wear out, but that's what I do. Mess screen is sanitized. Um, it's the same thing as like, this one here, this one's obviously a lot bigger. I found this on Amazon. I think it's like, I don't know, the eight inch one. It's perfect for my little kegs. Honestly, probably great in a five gallon keg too. Uh, yeah, it would, it would work. My one and a half ounces. I have two marbles I put in here. These little clear guys. I'm gonna weigh it down, it'll sink anyway, but just to get initially sunk, why not? Screw that on. Oh! Oh, I only lost a couple pellets. No big deal. No big deal. Try that again, shall we? There we go. Okay. So I put that in the keg. Empty. Sanitized, but empty. And then hook up to the inline. Turn the gas on. And I purge. And I'm purging with the hops in there. Because it's opened up. I threw the canister in there. Just purging the hops. Uh, purging with the hops in there. Mike Tonsmeyer did this on his blog. We talked about it on his blog, so I've been doing it. That was years ago I read that. I'm gonna do a long one here, this little one. Maybe like 10 seconds. Now this is a 1.75 gallon keg. So for you it might be a little longer, but that's it. Whatever that was, that's all I do. And now we're ready to uh, transfer the beer onto this. Okay, I've been asked this before too. Uh, what do I, how do I purge my lines? Cause that's been, Big, big change I made is purging my lines and that's really helped my oxidation issues. My end that goes into the keg, I just put this against it like this. And then I just hold it there and I just turn it on, probably about five PSI. And that's it, I let it bleed through for about 10 seconds or so. You can kind of hear it. And now we transfer, obviously you have to avoid splashing at this point in time. So there we go, I'm transferring. And uh, yeah, well, let's, cl let's clip to um, 
after this is filled, I'll show you what I do next. All right, this is transferred. Now I purge again. Again, the quick disconnect is very, very handy. That's click back, that's back on. Turn it back on, I'm at about eight PSI, and I bleed again. And some people do the step uh, where they like fill it with like 30 PSI after they're done with this part, roll it around, go carbonation in like 24 hours. I don't do that anymore. The main reason why is I don't want to, after that, let's say 24 hours, to bleed out all my hop aroma that I captured. So I'm one and done. I, I do this, put it in my chest freezer, uh, my other chest freezer at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, exactly 55, that's my uh, wine chest freezer. About two days, pull it off, put it in my cold chest freezer at 36 degrees, and uh, yeah. And then put, put gas on it, 10, 8 to 10 PSI for about, you know, seven days, and then it's ready to go. So that's it. That's really it's how simple that is to eliminate oxygen. I sometimes will leave CO2 on this at like a 3 PSI level for, the, for that initial two days at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just bleed it out like that. And we're good. All the oxygen's out of there. And I found that jaw hopping even at like 55 degrees, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I get a little more hop aroma. It could just be me. I've done all sorts of ways of dry hopping. That's the best I've got uh, out of all the millions of batches I've done on this. So um, that's it. Now, if you are bottling, you do not have a CO2 tank. There is one option you can do, and that is do not shake or, or splash, I mean, all your wort. So when I'm transferring just then, you just siphon it. All you can do is when you go into your second, let's say your secondary or sorry, bottling bucket, let's say. That bottling bucket, just be very, very cautious of splashing. When you go into your uh, bottles from there, try not to splash. When you add priming sugar, just be very gentle when you pour the priming sugar in. That's all you can do. If you do have a CO2 tank and you're bottling, then you can do what I just did. You can just purge your lines, like you saw. Uh, you can purge your bottles. You can purge your bottling bucket ahead of time. I use one gallon jugs to transfer um, my finished beer into my bottling bucket it's my bottling one gallon jug and that what that does is it helps eliminate um uh potential oxygen if i'm putting it if i'm bottling like from like a let's say like a bucket or an actual pot you're just gonna have a ton of surface area it's gonna be t exposed to a ton of ton of oxygen but these one gallon jugs i can purge the crap out of that and the, the, the top of that is like so small it really helps keep the co2 in there and that's it, that's as simple as that. That is what I do, it works for me most of the time. I still sometimes have oxidation issues, especially with hoppy beer. It just, just is more susceptible to oxygen, especially the hazy beers, or the hazy IPAs, I should say. So there you go, that's it, short and sweet video, that's what I do. Stay tuned for more videos. I hope you're enjoying your winter so far. It's pretty much Christmas, it's great. See you next time.